This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Opinions are free, which is why we're here. It's news and talk that our sponsors agree on. WCTR. Up next, it's Area 53 and Marvin Trill, broadcasting live from his trailer in the desert. A new planet found in space. Is it really a planet or a decoy put up to confuse us? Ghosts, time travel, and the flushing toilet. Which way did Newton's toilet spiral? And finally, are women made from sand? We explore deeper and get to the truth. I'm Marvin Trill. This is Area 53. Hello. You're on the line. Yeah, hi. I'm a truck driver and listen to your show all the time. I see a lot of unexplained phenomena out there, especially in restrooms. I agree with you about the moon. We never landed on the moon. It's such a good fake. Remember, the Russians, our arch enemy still, I might add, them and the Australians and uh, some species of dog, they beat us into space. The only thing the Russians are shooting into space are hot dogs and monkeys. Kind of a Noah's Ark fast food kind of vibe. Hey, my dead aunt could make a better space station than them. Mm, intriguing. I'd like to meet her. On the conspiracy line, Paula, you're in Area 53. Do not use fluoride. It's evil. It made me kill my doctor. Why would we worry about a chemical that the government puts into the water? Animals can now be trained to fly, including several species of bird. Think about the military applications. Hello, caller. Hi, my name's Emmanuel. I'm really worried about hackers sending a nuclear bomb after me. You know, through the phones. Do you think they can pinpoint my location? Look, it's good for the economy to live in constant fear. I mean, the phone company, they have your name on the bill. They know your number. How do you feel about that? I knew it. Hello, Julie from Liberty City. You're on the line. A cowboy ghost has been haunting my house. I want you to take off your blouse. Stand at the window. Stand there for hours each night. Lure him in. Trapping rogue spirits is dangerous work, especially topless. Take lots of photographs. All right, who's got a theory for me? Next. Hey, man, love the show. But when are you guys going to start seeing the bigger picture? We're being lied to, man. And guys like you don't help much, you know? You're virtually one of them. Soon you know what I'm talking about. If people could please just attempt to make sense, that's all I'm asking. Last night, as I was laying in my pod meditating, and it occurred to me, why are you even listening to me? Turn off all electrical devices, including your radio. Hector in San Garcia, why are you still listening? Because I was hoping you could explain these noises. What noises? God, not you too. Now think about the things we talked about today. Think, seriously think. Can it be real? Can it be false? We'll see you next time in Area 53. Be careful out there, wherever you are. That was Area 53. We're sorry. Sometimes the law is not enough. Did you file the subpoena in the McPherson case? No, it wasn't urgent. I filed an AO440. AO440? I know, I know. So I went shopping for these loafers. Has anyone got a stapler? I've got a lot of forms, and there's a slight reason here. Law, because paperwork is dramatic. Catch it Thursdays on Weasel before it catches you. Next up on WCTR, the news. We try to make it interesting and not depressing. This is Leanne Forger, WCTR News. Foreigners are coming. Who are they and why should we care? The FDA warns shampoo is killing your unborn child. Plus, protests continue outside the Zebra Bar Candy Company. Now for Traffic and Transit with Richard Burns. That's right, Leanne. I'm Richard Burns. The aftermath of the devastating earthquake continues. Travel is still severely restricted statewide. Officials say there are still no reported casualties, which is truly unfortunate as it makes for incredibly boring news. The federal government is still refusing aid to help rebuild bridges, and everyone is blaming each other. The governor is threatening to bomb Australia, despite scientific proof it wasn't their fault. Richard Burns, WCTR. Police say gang trouble is on the rise again, especially in Los Santos. Sources believe it is linked to the rising drugs trade, while others blame the fascist pigs. Also in gang news, customs officials report a huge influx of Russian mobsters and cheap weapons since the fall of the wall. The governor's office said everything is okay. In Vinewood news, rapper Mad Dog was celebrating the launch of his new clothing line. Richard caught up with him. The thing about Mad Dog is... 
think about becoming a superstar. I mean, you know, I've done everything I could do in the rap game. I want shit hands down. Nobody can handle me, you know? Lifetime champ, no shit. Can I say shit? Oh, hey man, it's cool. That's cool. Okay, no shit. I got clothes. I got labels coming out, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing drinks. I got shoes, tires, rims. Thinking, you know, next stage is being a full-on superstar, you know? I get to wear a tight suit and nail a lot of tail, you dig? You know what I do in real life? Gotta get me a drink, though, right now, because I'm thirsty, you know? What a troubled man. Sounds like he should lay off the sauce. Also today, a Tourette's theater group banned from the park, unless they take up mine. And finally, in foreign news, a suspected U.S. agent was caught in Panama selling weaponry to right-wing guerrillas, causing a major incident. But we plan mostly to gloss over the implications and hope you enjoy some sporting activity tonight. The State Department is advising against foreign travel. This was Leanne Forger, WCTR News. Let's be careful out there. Up next on WCTR, it's the man coaches hate. It's Derek Thackeray in the tight end zone. Brought to you by Eris Pump Up Shoes. Because women love a winner, and winners wear shoes. Should we uh, start with the national anthem? Uh, yeah, yeah, screw it. Yeah, I got, I got too drunk last night. Just uh, play the opening music. Put one, put two. Uh, welcome back to the tight end zone. Now it's time for something really important. Fat men talking about games they don't really understand, played by people they don't know. I'm your host, Derek Thackeray. What a crazy year it's been. Let's recap. Drug scandals involving preschool soccer moms. Ha <laughs> ha, woo. And the national finals, rich and popular people are fighting it out. Pay attention. The country is in mourning. And most importantly, sportswear. We talked to a fitness expert about the crucial role of endorsed clothing. And who could forget, we visit the greatest moments. Here he comes. He's in the shadows. There he is. Is he going to make it? Yes, he did. Ladies and gentlemen, what you have just witnessed is the biggest moment in world history. Who cares about a declaration of independence or discovery of penicillin? You have just seen one man score a point. When the rest of the world discovers TV, they'll be able to see this. Wow, isn't that amazing? He did what he was paid to do. We love sports more than you. Love it or loathe it, let's talk about it. Stay in the tight and... Let's go to the phones. Yeah, the Wolves. Hey, Derek, my name's Jason, and I'm a Wolves fan. First time caller. I don't vote. I can't be bothered. But I will kick your ass if you disrespect my sports team. (laughs) Okay, the Wolves. That's a team playing sports as if they cared. Yeah, the Wolves. I don't care who's sleeping with who on the team. Yeah, I'm with you, buddy. Okay. Hey, let's take another call. Who's on the phone? Hello, caller. You're on with the tight end of radio. Hey, I'm a big Olympics fan. Always have been. Since day one. Been to every one. Me too. I love the games, especially the luge. (laughs) I'm married, so uh, sliding down an icy tunnel of doom at high speed makes sense. (laughs) Yeah, I know about frigid action myself. I mean, they gotta be kidding me. Since when has running been an Olympic sport? Running ain't a sport. Don't make me puke. Anyone can run. My ex-wife made me an athlete. I ran my ass off when the Red Baron flew into town. I tell you, when I was a kid, there were only three sports that mattered. Football, baseball, and killing communists. And uh, I had a great childhood. Really great. Even if my uncle did come into my room that late at night drunk. And, oh, that was nuts. Any, uh, <laughs> anyway, look, who's on the line? We got a Caledonians fan on the line. Tough times, huh? Hey, uh, your whole life revolving around real Rich men playing poorly. Man, I totally identify with shallow heroes who I don't know personally. God, I love a dude with a big pituitary gland. I love the Callies, man, but you know, this year, I'm telling you, they're going to need to score some points and get some yardage and win the game. Yeah, if they don't win, men will be beating their wives with good reason. Hey, they got to start playing to win, trying to score some on the other team. Hey, I wish I had a wife so she could beat me. (laughs) Here's what I say, man. If you want to be number one, you got to go for first place. I know, I know. Hey, I mean, uh, you know, it's great stating the obvious, but once you get paid for it, things get really complicated. Man, I was at their training camp this spring. And the mood in the locker room, dude, guys were getting changed, man. I mean, they were really getting prepared. Shoes were going on, feet, shirts were going on. 
the shirt part of their body, serious faces on them. And you could tell that they were going to play this game. Bottom line is, if they don't score more points than the other team, they can't win! Yeah, man. God, you have some spooky insights into sports, dude. I love your show, man. I I love you. (coughs) (coughs) Yeah, look, great talking to you. Excuse me. Hey, that's really perceptive stuff. You know, we've been petitioning stadiums to install a urinal trough in front of each row of seats. Now, it's so inconvenient having to leave your seat, make everyone stand up, get up, get up, you know, to, to let you by, then go stand in line for the bathroom. I mean, half the time we can barely walk anyway, all right? So we'll be handing out petitions that say support the team. Don't leave the game pee at your seat. Go into the phone. Try new McDonald's sauce now. Now? Huh? The race to McDonald's is on! No! No! I will win! Welcome! I guess we both win. Try new savory chili McDonald's sauce only at McDonald's. Ba da ba ba ba! Na, gaano ba kita kamahal? Ganito, kasi lagi mo pinipili paborito ko. Love na kids ang taste ng Eden. May milk vitamins at calcium pa. Titinitipid mm. ang pagmamahal. Uy, 100? Isa surprise ko sila. Kaya kong mag-magic. Maggie Magic Sarap All-in-One. Ano mang lutuin, nagiging special. Mm. Oko ito ah. Special, kahit di mahal. Kagagawan niya ng magic. Nakita niyo yung 100 ko? I'm a big fight fan. Love a bit of a punch-up. Since my wife and children got taken into a shelter, my friend said, Chuck, you obviously love hitting things. So I've gotten into boxing. How about that fight between Gonzalez and Jackson? Well, there's one thing about boxing I always remember. You know, one man wins, the other goes home a loser. Because in boxing, unlike most sports, gravity works downwards. You gotta be shitting me. Hey, Derek Thackeray, don't shit on no one. But uh, I do like to piss on my seat and uh, at my seat, too. Not really on it, so stay out of the way. <laughs> tell me. The fight game? That ain't rigged, is it? Of course not. Hey, how could anything professional be fake? <laughs> hey, there's too much money at stake for one thing. I mean, these guys got too much to lose. I mean, why is a guy going to take a dive for a few extra million when he could earn that over a number of years getting his brain turned to pulp? Be serious for a minute. The clock is counting down again. It's time for Derek to head to the locker room and celebrate in the shower. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bring a cooler full of beers and get ready to riot. This has been the Tight End Zone. And this is WCTR, proving that radio is better than TV. That's the show men with large guts love. Deal with your ignorance in one minute flat. Complex issues in 60 seconds. WCTR. Coming up next, the most mind-numbing thing since the lobotomy. Entertaining America. This week on Entertaining America, Richard Goblin, one man's triumphant return to cock. The Sherman Octuplets, a Venturis man says he's slept with them all. Plus, noise, speed, danger, cursing, and patriotism finally come together this weekend at the All-America Drunk Driving Cup. Hi from Vinewood, you're on Entertaining America with me, Billy Dexter, bringing you everything that is important in culture and entertainment, if there is a difference between the two, from the heart of entertainment in America, Vinewood San Andreas. You with me, the Dex. Wanted to call the show Stack the Dex, but no. Not yet. Kiff Lum. Anyway, great. Big show for you this week. Controversy, they'll be giving me a Pulitzer. Anyway, today, we've got some great guests. First up, we speak to troubled action hero Jack Howitzer. Then we have a live phone leak up with a very special guest, Modern Day Lazarus, a man back from the grave now making it as an extra in major motion pictures. Then, I will explain the secrets of the universe to everyone. But first up, stack the decks in which I, Billy Dexter, meet the entertainers in the news. Kiff 
Jack Howitzer, once the biggest star in America, but the last three years have been unkind. People describe him as a dinosaur, an action hero relic from the 80s, a muscle-bound Neanderthal, and my favorite, the most stupid gorilla in the jungle. Jack, welcome to the show. Kip Long. <laughs> Good to be here, Dex. Pleasure. Yeah. So your movies Exploder and Annihilator got America through some tough times, and I was also a huge fan of, of Zero Seconds to Death Thank Time. Thank you. Thing. Thank you. But many say your new film has gone too far. No, this is a romantic comedy with drama. It's got action. It's got a heart. That's what's most important, I think. Okay, well, let's take a listen to the trailer. All right, let's roll that. He was a man at war with himself, fighting a war that someone else lost. It's over, Tim! The war is over! It's never over! You see yeah. him wipe out millions of Cambodians in Exploder. Now, Jack Howitzer is Tim in his most challenging role yet. We're here, Tim! A preschool for slow children? You're the new teacher, Tim! Special needs cop. Yeah. It's the story of a psychotic ex-Marine showing tough love to special ed kids. One of you tards has been running Peruvian Flake through the special ed school, and I'm gonna find it. No juice and cookies! You know you suck, Tim! But soon, he becomes one of them. What is this? That's teacher's gun. You wanna see it? Cool. Oh, you gone and shot yourself! Way to go! He was finally beginning to live a normal life. Then, all hell breaks loose. Tim, you're so stupid. You count with your fingers. You want to party with me? Bring it on! Tim, what are you doing? I fought for my country. Welcome to the land of freedom, bitches. Yeah! Special needs cop. He had a lot to learn. This film cannot be rated. Wow, that's terrible! No wonder our studios are surrounded by protesters. How could anybody find that offense? No, no, Jack, it's appalling. Your insensitive portrayal of disabled people makes me physically sick. And the idea of you calling someone slow-witted is, frankly, laughable. Hold on, hold on. Drugs <laughs> are a problem throughout all of society, and I fight them by any means necessary. Yeah, but you use drugs. No, 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 I'd rather die than use drugs. I use steroids and some recreational blow, but I got the funds for it. You know, I got the money. Yeah. Don't you think you're just a little out of touch? Whoa, 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 yeah. I'm rich and I work in Vinewood, okay? I'm not out of touch. Action, weightlifting, and killing foreigners. That never goes out of style, Dex. My last film, okay, Loincloth, about a wrestler who's dropped into Thailand and I saved the world by teabagging the bad guy. On the soil once bloody with war. And I met a small group of veterans, Americans and Vietnamese, who went and I, I watched the exchange of personal artifacts from that war, identification cards and a diary. It was deeply moving to see the reaction of the Vietnamese and American soldiers. A culmination of 50 years of hard work on both sides to address the painful legacies of war and to choose choose to work together toward peace and a better future. Nothing about that journey was inevitable. For decades, it would have been unthinkable for an American president to stand in Hanoi alongside a Vietnamese leader and announce a mutual commitment to the highest level of country's partnership. But it's a powerful reminder that our history need not dictate our future. With the concerted leadership and careful effort, adversaries can become partners. Overwhelming challenges can be resolved, and deep wounds can heal. So let us never forget that. When we choose to stand together and recognize the common hopes that bind all humanity, we hold our hands the power in that power to bend that arc of history. My fellow leaders, we gather once more at an inflection point in world history. With the eyes of the world upon all of you, all of us, as President of the United States, I understand the duty my country has to lead in this critical moment, to work with countries in every region, linking them in common cause, to join together with partners who share a common vision of the future of the world, where our children do not go hungry 
and everyone has access to quality health care. Where workers are empowered and our environment is protected. Where entrepreneurs and innovators everywhere can access opportunity everywhere. Where conflicts are resolved peacefully and countries can chart their own course. The United States seeks a more secure, more prosperous, more equitable world for all people because we know our future is bound to yours. Let me repeat that again. We know our future is bound to yours. And no nation can meet the challenges of today alone. The generations that precede us, preceded us organized this body, the United Nations, and built international financial institutions and multilateral and regional bodies to help take on the challenges of their time. It isn't always perfect. It wasn't always perfect. But working together, the world made some remarkable and undeniable progress to improve the lives of all people. We avoided the renewal of global conflict while lifting more than one billion people, one billion people out of extreme poverty. We together expanded access to education for millions of children. We saved tens of millions of lives who would have otherwise been lost to preventable and treatable diseases like measles, malaria, tuberculosis. HIV AIDS infections and deaths plummeted in no small part because of PEPFAR's work in more than 55 countries, saving more than 25 million lives. It's a profound testament to what we can achieve when we act together. We take on tough challenges and an admonition for all of us to urgently accelerate our progress so that no one's left behind because too many people are being left behind. The institutions we built together at the end of the Second World War are an enduring bedrock of our progress. And the United States is committed to sustaining them. And this year, we're proud to rejoin UNESCO. We also recognize that to meet the new challenges of our decades-old institutions and approaches, they must be updated to keep peace with the world. We have to bring in more leadership and capability that exists everywhere, especially from regions that have not, have not always been fully included. We have to grapple with the challenges that are more connected and more complex. And we have to make sure we're delivering for people everywhere, not just somewhere, everywhere. Simply put, the 21st century, 21st century results are badly needed, are needed to move us along. That starts with the United Nations, starts right here in this room. In my address to this body last year, I announced the United States will support expanding the Security Council, increasing the number of permanent and non-permanent members. The United States has undertaken serious consultation with many member states. We'll continue to do our part to push ref more reform efforts forward, look for points of common ground, and make progress in the year ahead. We need to be able to break the gridlock. Tony Hawks, uh, I was just calling up there because I was listening and I figured out, you know, that I could help out some of y'all clients. You know, this is none other than Jizzy, the proprietor of the Pleasure Domes Club. If anybody is out there lonely, first of all, with all the people on this planet walking around, there's no reason for anybody to be lonely. You understand? That's why I'm in the business of keeping people with company. You know what I'm saying? People who got low self-esteem and they need to pick me up. That's a spiritual picture. That's love teabagging. That stuff ain't out of style. Yeah, things are more sensitive now. I was affected, all right, when Ho Chi got hurt and exploded. I mean, I, I thought... Try new McDonald's sauce now. Now? Huh? The race to McDonald's is on! No! No! I, I will win! win!
Love na kids ang taste ng Eden. May milk vitamins at calcium pa. Titinitipid mm. ang pagmamahal. Uy, 100! Isa surprise ko sila. Kaya kong mag-magic. Maggie Magic Sarap All-in-One. Ano mang lutuin, nagiging special. Mm. Oh, okay ito ah. Special kahit di mahal. Kagagawa niya ng magic. Nakita niyo yung 100 ko? Latin America and Southeast Asia, through strategic targeted public investments, we can unlock enormous amounts of private sector financing. The G7 has pledged to work with parties to collectively mobilize $600 billion in infrastructure financing by 2027. The United States has already mobilized more than $30 billion to date. We're creating a race to the top with projects that have high standards for workers, the environment, and intellectual property while avoiding the trap of unsustainable debt. We're focusing on economic corridors that will mac maximize the impact of our collective investment and deliver consequential results across multiple countries and multiple sectors. For example, the libido corridor will extend across Africa from the western port of Angola to the DRC to Zambia, boosting regional connectivity and strengthening commerce and food security in Africa. Similarly, the groundbreaking effort we announced at the G20 connect India, to connect India to Europe through the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Israel will spur opportunities and investment across two continents. This is part of our effort to build a more sustainable, integrated Middle East it demonstrates how Israel's greater normalization and economic connection with its neighbors is delivering positive and practical impacts, even as we continue to work tirelessly to support a just and lasting peace between Isra the Israelis and Palestinians, two states for two people. Now, let me be clear. None of these partnerships are about containing any country. They're about a positive vision for our shared future. When it comes to China, I want to be clear and consistent. We seek to responsibly manage the competition between our countries so it does not tip into conflict. I've said we are for de-risking, not decoupling with China. We will push back on aggression and intimidation and defend the rules of the road, from freedom of navigation to overflight to level economic playing field that have helped safeguard security and prosperity for decades. But we also stand ready to work together with China on issues where progress hinges on our common efforts. Nowhere is that more critical than accelerating the climate crisis, than, than the accelerating climate crisis. We see it everywhere. Record-breaking heat waves in the United States and China, wildfires ravaging North America and Southern Europe, a fifth year of drought in the Horn of Africa. Tragic, tragic flooding in Libya. My heart goes out to the people of Libya that's killed thousands, thousands of people. Together, these snapshots tell an urgent story of what awaits us if we fail to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and begin to climate-proof the world. For one day, for one day, my administration, the United States, has treated this crisis as an existential threat from the moment we took office, not only for us, but for all of humanity. Last year, I signed into law in the United States the largest investment ever anywhere in the history of the world to combat the climate crisis and help move the global economy toward a clean energy future. We're also working with the Congress to quadruple our climate financing to help developing countries reach their climate goals and adapt to climate impacts. And this year, the world's on track to meet the climate, fi the cli climate finance pledge that made under the Paris Agreement $100 billion to raise collectively. 
But we need more investment from public and private sector alike, especially in places that have contributed so little to global emissions, but face some of the worst effects of climate change, like the Pacific Islands. The United States is working directly with the Pacific Island Forum to help these nations adapt, build resilience to the climate impact, even as we lead the effort to build innovative new partnerships to attack the global challenges from all sides. From the First Movers Coalition, which is mobilizing billions of private sector community and the private sector commitments, to creating a market demand for green products in carbon-intense sectors like concrete, shipping, aviation, and trucking, to the Agricultural Innovation Mission for Climate, which is bringing farmers into the climate solution and making our food supply more resilient to climate shocks, and the Global Methane Pledge, now endorsed by more than 150 countries, which expands our focus beyond our carbon emission targets to reduce the potential greenhouse gases in our atmosphere by 30 percent in this decade. It's all within our capacity. We need to bring the same commitment and urgency and ambition as we work together to meet the Sustainable Development Goals of 2030. These goals were adopted at the United Nations in 2015 as a roadmap for improving lives around the world. But the hard truth is, for decades of progress, the world has lost ground these past years in the wake of COVID-19, conflicts, and other crises. The United States is committing to doing its part to get us back on track. All told, in the first two years of my administration, the United States has invested more than $100 billion to drive development progress in bolstering food security, expanding access to education worldwide, strengthening health care systems, and fighting disease. And we've helped mobilize billions more in the private sector investments. But to accelerate our forward progress on the Sustainable Development Goals, we all have to do more. We need to build new partnerships that change the way we tackle this challenge, to unlock trillions of additional financing for development, drawing on all sources. We need to fill the gaps and address the failures of our existing system exposed by the pandemic. We need to ensure that women and girls benefit fully from our progress. We must also do more to grapple with it. So we'll be handing out petitions that say support the team. Don't leave the game pee at your seat. Go into the phone. I'm gonna be the five man. Like this punch up. This my wife and children are taken into a shelter. My friend says you got me. You always love hitting things. Well, there's one thing about boxing I always remember. You know, one man wins, the other goes home a loser. Good at boxing, like most sports, grapple works. Hey, Derek Zachary, don't shit on no one. But and at my seat, not really. So stay out of the way. Of course not. Hey, how could anything professional be fake? <laughs> hey, there's too much money at stake for one thing. I mean, these guys got too much to lose. I mean, why is a guy gonna take a dive for a few extra million when he could earn that over a number of years getting his brain turned to pulp? Be serious for a minute. The clock is counting down again. It's time for Derek to... ...that holds back so many low- and middle-income countries. When nations are forced to service unsustainable debt payments over the needs of their own people, it makes it harder for them to invest in their own futures. And as we work together to recover from global shocks, the United States will also continue to be the largest single community donor, country donor, of humanitarian assistance at this moment of unparalleled need in the world. Folks, cooperation, partnership. These are the keys to progress on the challenges that affect us all, and the baseline for responsible global leadership. We don't, we don't need to agree on everything to keep moving forward on issues like arms control, a cornerstone of international security. After more than 50 years of progress under the Non-Proliferation Treaty, 
Russia is shredding long-standing arms control agreements, including announcing the suspension of New START and withdrawing from the conventional forces in Europe Treaty. I view it as irresponsible. It makes the entire world less safe. The United States is going to continue to pursue good faith efforts to reduce the threat of weapons and mass destruction and lead by example. The governor's office said everything is okay. In Vinewood news, rapper Mad Dog was celebrating the launch of his new clothing line. Richard caught up with him. The thing about Mad Dog is, think about becoming a superstar. I mean, you know, I've done everything I could do in the rap game. I want shit hands down. Nobody can handle me, you know? Lifetime champ, no shit. Can I say shit? It was time to do something, a film that made a difference. Hey, about Ho Chi was a character. Exploder was a movie. Right, right, and I was there, and I should have killed them all. Yep. Don't push me, Dex. I'll give you a war you won't believe. That look in your eye, right here. Try new McDonald's sauce now. Now? Huh? The race to McDonald's is on! No! No! I will win! Welcome! Welcome. I guess we both win. win. Try new savory chili McDonald's sauce, only at McDonald's! Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Go! Na, gano ba kita kamahal? Ganito, kasi lagi mo pinipili paborito ko. Love ng kids ang taste ng Eden. May milk vitamins at calcium pa. Mmm! Titinitipid ang pagmamahal. Uy, 100! Isa-surprise ko sila. Kaya kong mag-magic. Maggi Magic Sarap All-in-One. Ano mang lutuin, nagiging special. Mmm! Okay ito ah! Special, kahit di mahal. Kagagawan yan ng magic. Nakita niyo yung 100 ko? Hey, you gotta have... Screw it. Yeah, I got, I got too drunk last night. Just uh, play the opening music. Put one, put two. Welcome back to the Titan Zone. Now it's time for something really important. Fat men talking about games they don't really understand, played by people they don't know. I'm your host, Derek Thackeray. What a crazy year it's been. Let's recap. Drug scandals involving preschool soccer moms. Ha <laughs> ha! And the national finals. Rich and popular people are fighting it out. Pay attention. The country is in mourning. And most importantly, sportswear. Talk to a fitness expert about the crucial role of endorsed clothing. And who could forget we've. Their loss is felt everywhere. They are essential. The advancement of human progress that brings us together. My fellow leaders, let me close with this. At this inflection point in history, we're going to be judged by whether or not we live up to the promises we made to ourselves, to each other, to the most vulnerable, and to all those who will inherit the world we create, because that's what we're doing. Will we find within ourselves the courage to do what must be done to preserve the planet, to protect human dignity, to provide opportunity for people everywhere, and to defend the tenets of the United Nations? There can only be one answer to that question. We must and we will. The road ahead is long and difficult, but if we preserve, persevere, and prevail, if we keep the faith in ourselves and show what's possible, let's do this work together. Let's deliver progress for everyone. Let's bend the arc of history for the good of the world. Because it's in our power to do it. Thank you for listening. You're kind.
Since that Run meeting, we have already seen a number of encouraging measures that few could have imagined only a short time ago. Hey man, you can't be doing the missiles and rockets are no longer flying in every direction. Nuclear testing has stopped. Some military facilities are already being dismantled. Our hostages have been released, and as promised, the remains of our fallen heroes are being returned home to lay at rest in American soil. I would like to thank Chairman Kim for his courage and for the steps he has taken. Since that meeting, we have already seen a number of encouraging measures that few could have imagined only a short time ago. The missiles and rockets are no longer flying in every direction. Nuclear testing has stopped. Some military facilities are already being dismantled. Our hostages have been released, and as promised, the remains of our fallen heroes are being returned home to lay at rest in American soil. I would like to thank Chairman Kim for his courage and for the steps he has taken, though much work remains to be done. The sanctions will stay in place until denuclearization occurs. I also want to thank the many member states who helped us reach this moment, a moment that is actually far greater than people would understand. Far greater. But for also their support and the critical support that we will all need going forward. Special thanks to President Moon of South Korea, Prime Minister Abe of Japan, and President Xi of China. In the Middle East, our new approach is also yielding great strides. We can barely walk anyway, all right? So we'll be handing out petitions that say support the team. Don't leave the game pee at your seat. Go into the phones. I'm a big fight fan. Love a bit of a punch-up. Since my wife and children got taken into a shelter, my friend said, Chuck, you obviously love hitting things. So I've gotten into boxing. How about that fight between Gonzalez and Jack? Well, there's one thing about boxing I always remember. You know, one man wins, the other goes home a loser. Because in boxing, unlike most sports, gravity works downward. You gotta be shitting me. Hey, Derek Thackeray, don't shit on no one. But, uh, I do like to piss on my seat and, uh, at my seat, too. Not really on it, so stay out of the way. Ha, <laughs> ha, the five games, that ain't read, is it? Of course not. Hey, how could anything professional be fake? <laughs> hey, there's too much money at stake, for one thing. I mean, these guys got too much to lose. I mean, why is a guy gonna take a dive for a few extra million when he could earn that over a number of years getting his brain turned to pulp? Be serious for a minute. The clock is counting down again. It's time for Derek to head to the locker room and celebrate in the shower. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bring a cooler full of beers and get ready to riot. This has been the Tight End Zone. <laughs> and this is WCTR, proving that radio is better than TV. That's the show men with large guts love. If you crave news, WC. West Coast Talk Radio. If you love to hear liberals whine and conservatives lecture, then stay tuned for I Say You Say. The future of America. And this time we need it. I'm Dr. Phillips. And I'm also Dr. Phillips. Today on the show, do cave paintings in museums make us violent? The anti beef movement. And we take on the highly charged debate about test two babies and actually talk to water. And then flashbacks. That's all today on I Say, You Say. We share last names, but that's about it. East meets West, and the West always wins. That wall came down, darling. Yes, unfortunately it did. I, I don't know if you saw today's news, so who is in the right in this great dialectical disaster? Is it, as I think, a case of share and share alike? Love your fellow man and all wear matching jumpsuits while working on a collective hydroponic farm growing potatoes? Or kill or be killed, crush the weak, and starve the poor, as my wonderful wife thinks. You decide, or let us decide for you. Give us a call, my wife social Darwinism, or me, lecturer in pointless anthropology, or 
That's the problem with liberals. They don't know when to shut up and enjoy freedom. Let's go to the phones. Uh, yeah, hi. Here's the deal. I'm really funny, but nobody wants to hire somebody funny. I, I mean, how is that fair? I mean, I'm white, middle class, very erudite, um, you know, whatever that means. But people just respond badly to me. I, I don't understand it. Are you related to my husband? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't think so. I hope not. Have you got a question about politics? Yeah, sure. I know a lot about politics. Hey, can I do your job? You know, I used to be on the radio back in the day. Even my husband can't do his job, you strange, pathetic little sap. <laughs> Let's have a real caller, please. Hi, my name's Michelle. I'm a first-time caller to the show. I wanted to know what you guys thought about the proposition of banned smoking. Well, this is a simple issue. Smoking. Democracy at work again in our state. It seems like a good thing when you first look at it, but democracy only works when you agree with it. Then it's best to favor a totalitarian state. I'm not sure about this one. I think smoking is an invasion of my body, and I've always wanted to shoot people. I'm right behind the proposition. Me too. Thanks, Michelle. I also wanted to say hi to my stepbrother, Phil, who's been undergoing a hair transplant today. Hey, Phil, if you're listening, I hope it's six this time. I won't tell anyone you've got plugs, honey. That's great, honey. But if you want shout-outs, call the rap speak. That's offensive. And I'm really offended by what you're saying. I'm smarter. This used to be a free country. When? Ha! <laughs> good point, darling. Gotcha. Yes, good point. But remember, our founding fathers grew tobacco. Relaxed them between stressful stints of genocide and witch burning. And you're so against raising taxes, smokers pay more taxes than anyone. My grandfather smoked his whole life. He lived until he was 32. So what I'm saying is, why don't we encourage more smoking and use the money to pay for better health care and some cultural programs, bringing expressive dance and sun worship back to the inner cities? Worrying about the inner city has ruined your academic career. And this woolly thinking is going to ruin your chances of getting anywhere with me tonight. Right. The thing is, smoking is good. It lets people make a lot of money. But so is selectively culling the population. So what I'm proposing is a change in the proposition. Let people smoke, but make cigarettes much cheaper and force everyone to smoke. That way we weed out the wheat, make a lot of money in tax, and keep our national heritage intact. Line two, you're on. I say you say. Ah! I listen every time to the show. It really made me think about the world a whole new way. I moved out of the city because it sucks. Now I live in a compound surrounded by barbed wire. And shoot, kill anyone I don't recognize all my land. I just want to say thank you. That's quality broadcast. Yeah, thanks. That makes me feel a lot better about myself. Have you got a question? Yeah, I got corpses from 15 illegal immigrants in my yard. I killed them all myself with my bare hands. Can I get a tax break for all this unpaid work? Good question. I would certainly hope so. Ask your accountant if you can register them as dependents. Then hide most of your net worth offshore in a complex money laundering system designed to support the drugs trade. Then you can pay virtually no taxes and complain about how awful you think the whole country is, knowing you're doing as little as possible to help. Cool, thanks. That's good advice. I'm told that you very good Why? Because that man has a garden full of corpses and you're talking about money laundering. Yes, it's a great opportunity for some profit-centric thinking. You missed a wonderful opportunity to talk about recycling and organ donation. Oh, God, give me strength. I married a fool. I married a fool. You know, when we first met, I thought you were so glamorous with your long hair and big ideas. You were studying for a PhD in cultural ceramic history or lost cultural underwear or something. And I was very young, very foolish. Now I see an intellectual cesspit, a middle class disaster, a guilt trip, massive neuroses, and completely unable to function in society. No wonder I forgot to sleep around. And on that note, we have to go visit our marriage therapist. He was a conniving bitch and won't write me any more prescriptions for painkillers. Remember, when the left wing and the right wing come together, the country can really get going. Straight off a cliff. We'll see you next time. I can't imagine what those guys are like in the bedroom, but I'm sure it's a bit like the Bay of Pigs. That was I Say You Say. Coming soon to the Los Santos Convention Center, it's Mike Andrews. Understand, Understand that it's okay to be poor. poor. There need to be poor people. We rich are the yin. You are the yang. We need you. He's changed millions of lives with his book, Rags Are Riches. Now hear Mike Andrews live. Mr. Andrews, I I've had a run of bad luck, and I was wondering if the state could help me get back on my feet. This is the negative kind of self-obsessed and greedy talk that doesn't help anyone. My program will teach you a new outlook on life. 
Instead of complaining about being poor, enjoy it. Watch TV. Don't vote. Who cares? But I'm homeless. You've got it all wrong. Society doesn't owe you anything. The government has better things to worry about, like killing innocent people. You already have everything you need, so enjoy your life. See Mike Andrews live for only $200, payable in 10 installments. Reserve your seat today. Up next, it's Area 53 and Marvin Trill, broadcasting live from his trailer in the desert. A new planet found in space. Is it really a planet or a decoy put up to confuse us? Ghosts, time travel, and the flushing toilet. Which way did Newton's toilet spiral? And finally, are women made from sand? We explore deeper and get to the truth. I'm Martin Trill. This is Area 53. Hello, you're on the line. Yeah, hi. I'm a truck driver and listen to your show all the time. I see a lot of unexplained phenomena out there, especially in restaurants. I agree with you about the moon. We never landed on the moon. It's such a good fake. Remember, the Russians, our arch enemy still, I might add. Them Speed and the up, Australians and uh, some species of dog, they be us in... The only thing the Russians are shooting in a space are hot dogs and... Try new McDonald's sauce now. Now? Huh? The race to McDonald's is on! Yeah! Try new savory chili McDonald's sauce only at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Go! Na, gaano ba kita kamahal? Ganito, kasi lagi mo pinipili paborito ko. Love na kids ang taste ng Eden. May milk vitamins at calcium pa. Mmm! Titinitipid ang pagmamahal. Uy, 100! Isa surprise ko sila. Kaya kong mag-magic. Maggie Magic Sarap All-in-One! Ano mang lutuin, nagiging special! Special, kahit di mahal. Kagagawa niya ng magic. Nakita niyo yung 100 ko? First-time caller. I don't vote, I can't be bothered. But I will kick your ass if you disrespect my sports team. <laughs> okay, the Wolves, that's team playing sports as if they cared. Yeah, the Wolves! I don't care who's sleeping with who on the team. Yeah, I'm with you, buddy, okay. Hey, let's take another call. Who's on the phone? Hello? Caller, you're on with the tight end of radio. Hey, I'm a big Olympics fan. Always have been, since day one. Been to every one. Me too, I love the games, especially the luge. So, uh, sliding down an icy tunnel of doom at high speed makes sense. <laughs> yeah. States. From the horrible 2015 Iran nuclear deal and reimpose <laughs> nuclear <laughs> sanctions. The Iran deal was a windfall for Iran's leaders. In the years since the deal was reached, Iran's military budget grew nearly 40 percent. The dictatorship used the funds to build nuclear-capable missiles, increase internal mystery. repression. Cool off in our water sports park. I'll show your kids a great time. It's something they'll never forget and talk about for years to come, especially at therapy sessions. It's the place for magic and adventure. Leaving me free to shop and get lipo. Who's ready for the incredible Dribbles voyage? Jerry, can we come too? This is a journey you must undertake alone. It can be dark. Jerry, you shriek with delight. What's that hole in the wall for? You wait and see. You'll be amazed! Fuck the suits on. Glory Hole Theme Park! Open every-
every day till 3 a.m. It's a favorite show with serial killers and stalkers. Lonely Hearts is next. All through the sultry anonymity of night and sun of the day, you're on Lonely Hearts and W's. Cock-a-doodle-doo, it's time for chicken. Cock-a-doodle-doo, it's time for feast. Eat a 90-piece bucket, you can tell. He's been to Clucking Bell. The chicken is a bird with a tiny brain. So we assume he doesn't feel any pain. We shrink their heads and we breed them fast. Six wings, 40 breasts, and then they're gas. Cock-a-doodle-doo, it's psychotic crazy. Cock-a-doodle-doo, back to farming's insane. We denied it all before our stock price fell. Come down to the Clucking Bell. Clucking Bell! If you enjoy it, the chicken didn't die in vain. Early restricted statewide. Officials say there are still no reported casualties, which is truly unfortunate as it makes for incredibly boring news. The federal government is still refusing aid to help rebuild bridges, and everyone is blaming each other. The governor is threatening to bomb Australia. Despite scientific proof, it wasn't their fault. Richard Burns, WCTR. Police say gang trouble is on the rise again, especially in Los Santos. Sources believe it is linked to the rising drug trade, while others blame the fascist pigs. Also in gang news, customs officials report a huge influx of Russian mobsters and cheap weapons since the fall of the wall. The governor's office said everything is okay. In Vinewood news, rapper Mad Dog was celebrating the launch of his new clothing line. Richard caught up with him. The thing about Mad Dog is, I'm thinking about becoming a superstar. I mean, you know, I've done everything I could do in the rap game. I want shit hands down. Nobody can handle me, you know? Lifetime champ, no shit. Next stage is being a full-on superstar, you know? Get to wear tight suit, nail a lot of tail. Say, hey, you know what I do in real life? You gotta get me a drink. And you can discover them for yourself. Come along, I'll take you there. It was dusk, and the sun bled red over the city in Thailand as Chen brought me a sparkling water. A delicate, handsome, lovely woman. But war is folly, and we can only unite by visiting these epochs of culture, where a man can be himself, smoke cigarettes, dress in gladiator clothing if he likes. We mustn't force our way in culture upon our citizens. Rather, maybe Hemingway was right about. misconceptions about healthcare, charity, and civilization. Europe is not the real world. This is... Overrated. Eastern Europe was good for a few years after the war came down, but even there the police are too strict. You just can't let your hair down. There are far more unexplored pleasures to be had in the Far East. Next caller, you're on the Wild Traveler. Hey, I've been listening to you go on and on about traveling. Do you know how expensive it is to fly to Asia? Russia saw the right. They're all coming here to set up fine families and run numbers. South America, everyone went extinct there. They have less culture there than the content of my toilet bowl. Rainforest, Schmain Forest. In Mexico, if I wanted to be that close to my ancient ancestors, I'd be banging my mother-in-law instead of my wife's best friend. We can fight like beasts or agree to disagree. I'm sure the summit of your aspirations in life is a chill. Israel and Palestine, uh, Israel and Palestine, and uh, when Hamas Nagosama, uh, also Pansos, uh, 91st, uh, I'm the first, I'm the first.
Santa Verónica. Vacante Jesús. Welcome. 
I guess we both win. Try new savory chili McDonald's sauce only at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Go! Na, gaano ba kita kamahal? Ganito, kasi lagi mo pinipili paborito ko. Love na kids ang taste ng Eden. May milk vitamins at calcium pa. Mm. Titinitipid ang pagmamahal. Uy, 100! Isa surprise ko sila. Kaya kong mag-magic. Maggie Magic Sarap All-in-One. Ano mang lutuin, nagiging special. Mm. Okay ito ah. Special kahit di mahal. Kagagawan yan ng magic. Nakita niyo yung 100 ko? the world and I don't like it nobody should like it we defend many of these nations for nothing and then they take advantage of us by giving us high oil prices not good we want them to stop raising prices we want them to start lowering prices and they must contribute substantially to military protection from now on. We are not going to put up with it. These horrible prices much longer. Reliance on a single foreign supplier can leave a nation vulnerable to extortion and intimidation. That is why we congratulate European states such as Poland for leading the construction of a Baltic pipeline so that nations are not dependent on Russia to meet their energy needs. Germany will become totally dependent on Russian energy if it does not immediately change course. Here in the Western Hemisphere, we are committed to maintaining our independence from the encroachment of expansionist foreign powers. It has been the formal policy of our country since President Monroe that we reject the interference of foreign nations in this hemisphere and in our own affairs. The United States has recently strengthened our laws to better screen foreign investments in our country for national security threats. And we welcome cooperation with countries in this region and around the world that wish to do the same. You need to do it for your own protection. Come on. The United States is also working with partners in Latin America to confront threats to sovereignty from uncontrolled migration. Tolerance for human struggling and human smuggling and trafficking is not humane. It's a horrible thing that's going on at levels that nobody has ever seen before. It's very, very cruel. Legal immigration funds, criminal networks, ruthless gangs, and the flow of deadly drugs. Illegal immigration exploits vulnerable populations, hurts hardworking citizens, and has produced a vicious cycle of crime, violence, and poverty. Only by upholding national goals, destroying criminal gangs, can we break this cycle and establish a real foundation for prosperity. We recognize the right of every nation in this room to set its own immigration policy in accordance with its national interests. Just as we ask other countries to respect our own right to do the same, which we are doing. That is one reason the United States will not participate in the new Global Compact on Migration. Migration should not be governed by an international body unaccountable to our own citizens. Ultimately, the only long-term solution to the migration crisis is to help people build more hopeful futures in their home countries. Make their countries great again. Currently, we are witnessing a human tragedy 
as an example. In Venezuela, more than two million people have fled the anguish inflicted by the socialist Maduro regime and its Cuban sponsors. Not long ago, Venezuela was one of the richest countries on Earth. Today, socialism has bankrupted the oil-rich nation and driven its people into abject poverty. Virtually everywhere socialism or communism has been tried. It has produced suffering, corruption, and decay. Socialism's thirst for power leads to expansion, incursion, and oppression. All nations of the world should resist socialism and the misery that it brings to everyone. In that spirit, we ask the nations gathered here to join us in calling for the restoration. Sometimes people object to you taking their picture, but a few pennies of their local currency and they will fall. on the show do cave paintings in museums make us violent the anti-beef movement both hitler and mussolini were vegetarian and we take of democracy in venezuela